I spoke to Max Tegmark and I'm curious, you know, he also said that part of the letter- Max, Max I know better than Jeff Hinton actually. Okay, right, yeah. okay, got it. And uh, well, Jeff didn't think the letter was, he thought it was too late for a letter. Um, but I guess both are concerned that without some agreement along all the parties that, uh, you know, Max has this concept of Moloch where it is a race to the bottom, where everyone will optimize something that doesn't uh, result in the interest of everybody. What, what yeah, did, should, so should something I think be Max, done? Max and Jeff are more reinforcement learning geeks than I am. And I, th I think if you believe that AGI will be achieved by a reward maximizing agent, then you should be very scared because I mean, we have no way to design a good reward function like human values are messy and diffuse and we don't know how to bake them into a mathematical reward function. Then giving a reward function, like do what chat GBT thinks humanity wants you to do or something that's fucked up for a different reason. So I think if you believe the path to AGI is going to be making systems and maximize expected reward over a certain time horizon, you should be more worried about the outcome because those kinds of systems, the problem is they're going to maximize the reward you told them to fulfill rather than do what you actually want, which is hard to summarize in a mathematical reward function right now. OpenCog, my own approach to AGI, which underlies all our, our different AGI projects, OpenCog is not really about reward maximization. I mean, it can it can create reward functions and it can work toward maximizing those reward functions, but it can also do other, do other things. It has other complex self-organization within it. And I tend to view a goal not as something that you impose on an AI system from the get-go. A goal is something that arises within a mind to guide its self-organizing activity for a period of time. And that's how it is in us, right? Like, what, 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 what are my goals now? They're different than 10 years ago. They're different, they're different than, than, than a year ago. I mean, you, you could say our goals are to reproduce and spread our DNA, but I mean, not, not exactly. You got suicide bombers and, and, and benevolent war martyrs, right? So, I, I, I mean, I, I think, yeah, if you're tied to this reinforcement learning paradigm, things are going to look even even scarier. And both Max and Jeff Hinton tend to think that way. Still, I yeah, I don't think Tegmark really thought the pause was going to happen either. I think that that's he's too smart for that. It's it's more about it's more about making a a statement. And I think in that light, it succeeded. The statement was made. Yeah, yeah, it got the attention of everybody. A um, couple final things before we wrap up, and we're going to be doing this again in another couple weeks, which is great. Um, I had a chat with uh, your old friend, Professor Hugo de Gavis, and we went deep on his. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was. Did you, pretty, did you do an interview with Hugo? Uh, yeah, last Friday. It was pretty cool. And um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you, 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 Hugo, Hugo was a character and has a has a quite different perspective. Yeah, well, we went into his book, The Artelec War, and obviously he thinks that the Cosmos will be the pro-AI people and the Terrans will be the pro-human people, and, you know, we'll fight it out to yeah, the giga death. Yeah, I mean, we are, we, are, <laughs> we are getting closer to a Daguerre-style Terrans versus Cosmos scenario, right? Uh, 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 I mean, we're... Uh, I don't think it's going to be quite as explicit as he thought, where you have, like... You know, an army of robots flying the cosmist flag and an army of, of humans with Uzis flying flying the Terran flag or something. It's but still I think the political battles in the next era are gonna have an explicit Terran versus cosmist flavor, which it, which is is a different thread, right? I mean the threads in politics recently have been like, you know the Americans versus the dirty foreigners or in, in, in Europe, it's the Europeans versus the, 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 the immigrants. And then you've had people who value, you know, social welfare for the poor versus people who think the poor should be left to, to starve to death. So, I mean, you've got evangelical Christians versus secular humanists. So I think the Terran versus Cosmist is genuinely a new dichotomy to add to this, this mix of political things for people to fight about, and it, it's going to become become a bigger and 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 bigger one. And you you go you go saw many aspects of this before anyone else did. He he also saw you were going to have a U.S. versus China 
AI war, right? No, he he thought it was going to be like China's artificial brain administration versus the U.S. government's artificial brain administration. He didn't see it was going to be company versus company. On the other hand, China's companies all work for China's military and intelligence establishment and connections of Google and Microsoft with the U.S. intelligence are also well documented. So in a way, the things Yuga was foreseeing are there. They're just buried a little bit behind different sorts of, of indirection. Yeah, he always said that you were more optimistic than him. Uh, he, he, he said that was because maybe when he was drafted as a kid in Australia to go to the Vietnam War, and he feels like <laughs> that might have traumatized him, but he always said you were more optimistic than him because I know you guys were, were really close friends for a long time. Yeah, yeah, we, we, he, he's, he introduced me to my wife, actually. Right. I, mean, I mean, yeah, my, my wife, uh, Ray Ting, who's also an, an AI researcher, she's a computational linguist, she, she did the NLP development behind the Sophia robot, actually. But anyway, he was, she was Hugo's PG student in, in Shaman in China when, 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 when we met. So Hugo did me a, did me a big, big service that way. We never agreed on politics and, and sort of human stuff. I, I, I think we, we, we worked on technical things together and we had a lot of good times together, but we had pretty, pretty radical disagreements on various polit political matters de 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 definitely which uh, was was part of the fun i mean i never thought i should only have friends who i agree with on everything li li life is boring and that that just leads society to become like turned into different silos where you never talk to anyone outside your silo yeah i highly recommend singularity or bust to see a younger version of both of you guys it's yeah a, it's a great yeah. film and, and, uh, my, that, that that's fun for me to look back at because i had uh had ray ting in there before we became romantically involved so yeah. you, you get some scenes of us flirting with a robot it's pretty funny yeah i saw that too so jim rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReel.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReel.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's going to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm going to tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. 
Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?